Dr. B. Kalyan Sagarwati, who would be sharing with us the outcome of the G20 meetings that he has uh, served as the nodal officer on environment and the outcomes, the policy outcomes of this particular meeting and the kind of uh, initiatives that are going to be taken up on ground. Over to you, Dr. B. Kalyan Sagarwati. Thank you, sir. As uh, Samir Sharma sir is also uh, listening to the uh, uh, to what I'm going to speak, uh, please do correct me, sir. This is uh, my understanding of the outcome of the G20s, and uh, uh, therefore, but environment is such a huge subject, and there is so much of learning to be done. And I will quickly try to go through whatever we have done. Uh, in the state of uh, in the state of Assam, and of course, a little bit I work in Telangana. While I also try and bring my understanding to what happened in G20 and what were the resolutions that were finally passed. But to give context to the whole thing, I would like to just uh, go through the presentation while I speak. And and Sudhir, if you could just put the presentation on the next slide, please. So I always begin with this uh, with this slide, which uh, for whoever the listeners are. Uh, that just as we uh, look at the, the human body in terms of its health, uh, as to see whether the BP is all right, the blood pressure is all right, or the sugar, the creatinine levels are all right. Similarly, the health of the earth is measured by these parameters. Essentially, like uh, controlling seven para planetary boundaries, uh, we can say nine planetary boundaries is what we, uh, we see here. But the most important planetary boundaries uh, which are affecting are shown are in yellow and uh, and orange and those which are in green are relatively under control so one of the things that we find from uh, by focusing on this uh, planetary boundaries is that we see that uh, areas of concern to us are the obviously the biosphere integrity in terms of the uh, genetic diversity which is going down we are all aware that uh, that about we have about 2 million species some say about 8 million species but what we have identified as of today, and we lose about 2,000 species per annum, 200 to 2,000 species per annum. The estimates are vary with regard to the extinction rate, but it's a race against time. And uh, how we really uh, uh, take care of this biosphere integrity in order to maintain the overall parameters of the earth or the health of the earth is of the prime most concern. And the second thing, as we can see, is the biochemical flows, that is the nitrogen and phosphorus flows. Uh, which have uh, which are you know even carbon dioxide is a is a biochemical flow but we been generally talk about the nitrogen and the phosphorus flows which is of the second highest concern and the third important concern is the land system degradation as we see as to we say across the world about 30 percent of the land is degraded and uh, uh, perhaps uh, in india is also about 30 percent it affects about almost half the population it impacts almost all the jobs because of the fact uh, that the land system is getting degraded. At the rate at which we are going, they say that within about 60 years time, all the topsoil will be lost and therefore that's an area of, of huge concern. And of course, the climate change and we are aware of all the uh, protocols, the important protocols right from the Kyoto Protocol to the Montreal Protocol to the Paris Protocol, which were land making protocols with regard to climate change. So this is the general area in which uh, I think uh, was the base document on the base of which the G20 uh, meetings were held. Next slide, please. And uh, the, the, the G20, while, uh, while discussing and uh, from whatever documents I've read and I've, in a sense, uh, I've, uh, I've been the nodal officer, so I had, a, I had the opportunity of interacting to understand as to what exactly was the manner in which the G20, uh, the Delhi Declaration was going. And the vision document which I see is had ma majorly four pillars and it really addresses as to the uh, the planetary boundary concerns to some extent. But uh, it, it, the, the two major most concerns of biodiversity and land degradation were the things that were uh, basically addressed. And the other two pillars that you see which, uh, which G20 talked about, one was the circular economy and the marine pollution. They affect all the other planetary boundaries and these are, in my opinion, low-hanging fruits, circular economy and marine pollution are low-hanging fruits which can uh, directly impact everything and therefore I think they were taken as the as the two other pillars of G20. So the main two uh, uh, things that uh, G20 was focusing on was land degradation, biodiversity, how do we really like uh, attempt to have a circular economy in place in these G20 countries and uh, marine pollution with its, its of course pollution, every, every pollution is important but marine pollution was given 
uh, the, 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 the prime most importance as far as this G20 was concerned. Now, these being the pillars, now question was with regard to what did we do? We, in this particular declaration, we set certain dates. Now, the, the importance is not just the words per se or the as to what was, uh, was said, but what were the dates that were indicated? What were the timelines that were indicated? And what was the commitments made by, in terms of finance? These are the two things that one needs to look at. Now, when we have the dates, uh, uh, dates set uh, for, the, uh, for the world as such and for the countries as such, then we are really talking about a trajectory. And therefore, we are also talking about what we need to do on a year on year basis. And that impacts everything in terms of businesses, in terms of education, in terms of skills, in terms of the way in which policies need to be fashioned. So if we really have to uh, reduce the land degradation by 50% by 2040, then it, it would mean that we, we need to follow a certain amount of afforestation. We need to follow a certain amount of uh, rejuvenation me mechanisms for, uh, uh, for the purpose of uh, overcoming the land degradation. So we, of course, in India, we have done uh, a number of things like we have the Panchamrit uh, program, we have the Amrit Sarovar programs, and uh, and the in India is taking a lot of uh, initiatives on that. But this is just an indication of what needs to be done. The second is, of course, the biodiversity. In fact, I remember, in fact, Vani Madam is there uh, with regard to biodiversity. And uh, this is an area of huge potential because it is also, I think, one of the key concerns of the entire world with regard to the rate at which extinction is taking place. So whether we, we, we do research, whether we do, uh, whether we are into uh, developing tissue culture labs, uh, whether we are into, uh, into ensuring that, you know, we document it in terms of biodiversity registers, all these things are, uh, are, are going to be extremely important. And as I will show in the, as I will show in the next slide, that these are the things which will result in uh, a great amount of uh, jobs and how the courses of universities, the courses of, uh, of skill universities and education will have to be oriented towards a changing world, which is both a digital world and a green world. The third is, of course, uh, they have said with regard to circular, uh, in, with regard to land degradation, we have also come up, India has come up with its own uh, declaration called the Gandhinagar Declaration. And with regard to marine pollution, we have the Chennai Declaration, uh, which have, which both these declarations were uh, integrated or the principles were integrated into the Delhi Declaration. And uh, <clears throat> with regard to the circular economy, uh, I think one of the things that became much more clearer was that we will follow the EU circular and uh, where, you know, in, in terms of... Uh, the products which are having uh, uh, electronic products, the extended uh, um, extended responsibility of the producers is, is going to be established. I think that's a very important thing. And uh, in terms of circular economy, I think certain policies, since they, they, we are going to follow the EU circular, policies with regard to waste to energy, with regard to uh, industrial waste, biomedical waste, with regard to the electronic waste, I think these things uh, will become much more uh, uh, severe in times to come and uh, with regard to the uh, uh, the the marine pollution the osaka blue ocean vision was stressed during the g20s and uh, the things uh, the thing is of course the oceans being 70 percent of the total surface area uh, have always been an area of contention in terms of mining in terms of fishing rights in terms of antarctic research I, uh, there have been some concrete steps taken with regard to both pollution as well as the exploration of the oceans. These were the four pillars on which the G20 concluded its Delhi Declaration. Next slide, please. So, uh, <clears throat> since I, I was looking after also uh, education, skilling, uh, labor, cooperation, so I was looking as to what kind of jobs uh, would be created given uh, what was the Delhi Declaration and the way the G20 is going and how the world vision is changing and therefore what kind of jobs uh, is that uh, that one is going to create in the future, like whether it is auditors for carbon content or financial tax planners, trading specialists in carbon, green auditors, uh, the scientists who can uh, reduce the carbon footprint in industries and elsewhere, water auditors. Uh, this is going to be, uh, I think, you know, uh, these these things look uh, slightly, I mean, obscure at, at present, uh, but they are going to be extremely important as we go in the next five years. And uh, scientists who can really come up with uh, how we can protect biodiversity 
and how how there are a number of models of climate change uh, models in fact these things will become very very important of course india also came up with the concept of life management like we have a dietitian that life management specialist probably as to have a sustainable life will be a thing in the future next please this is a continuation of these uh, of these roles in fact green energy things that india is looking at is both wind uh, wind energy uh, solar and also green hydrogen in fact in iit guwahati has taken a lead role in uh, green hydrogen along with biofuels and green hydrogen we are trying to make a big difference in terms of making our environment or our meeting our commitment towards a global environment uh, in terms of the green economy uh, hydrogen of course green hydrogen is something which is completely non polluting but though we are investing our country is investing hugely in terms of green hydrogen it also impacts green hydrogen would would also have an impact with regard to the water availability now one way of looking at it is the 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 output of uh, or ra rather the the final product when we use hydrogen as a fuel is water which is non polluting but at the same time it's a uh, highly capital intensive and also will require a lot of water in terms of converting it into hydrogen through pyrolysis or whatever technologies we use to get green hydrogen and therefore uh, it's always a trade off between water versus uh, pollution as far as green hydrogen is concerned but the other things are the great opportunities uh, we are definitely looking at you know how we need to have specialists in uh, in uh, circular economy green building in in solar in wind and uh, green hydrogen and energy storages next and i also try to indicate what kind of uh, uh, try to make an estimate just go back to the previous slide what kind of estimate that we have in terms of uh, the, the the values so uh, sudeep just uh, the slide before uh, there was a slide in which i tried to say what was the kind of economy for each of these four pillars next slide please let me see the next slide kindly so i just tried to put some figures here as to what could be the incomes that will you know an indicative figure as to what uh, biodiversity those investing in biodiversity what kind of jobs and what kind of businesses will happen in biodiversity so we can see that it's a huge economy it's a 10 trillion uh, annual business value uh, for investing in biodiversity there is a huge business opportunity there is a educational opportunity uh, in land degradation i think that would be the second most important thing there is of course a huge opportunity in circular economy i put some figures on that on the basis of secondary research and uh, of course like those investing in trying to address uh, marine pollution also there would be the figures that i have quoted there of 623 billion in net benefits some of the uh, other important things that uh, that have come out of the g20 uh, was uh, linking up uh, future cities uh, uh, in terms of uh, you know these green cities also like in terms of tourism to environmentally friendly cities and also uh, one of the most important outcomes uh, was with regard to uh, uh, of course like you know the the gcf or the green climate fund which was supposed to actually transfer the funds both for adaptation and mitigation did not really take off after the paris protocol and therefore one of the reasons for, for that particular uh, fund not taking off was that there were no standards no standards set in terms of evaluation as to what measures are being taken by the various countries and this time well, this time in the delhi declaration they have come out with uh, a mechanism to establish transparency accountability and standards of uh, of what we are achieving or what each country is achieving in terms of the commitment it has made with regard to the uh, with regard to the uh, climate change and with regard to uh, you know uh, the the progress with regard to all these uh, all these uh, uh, with regard to all the commitments they have made uh, in the in, in the various protocols so the standards were very important and a mechanism to set those standards because only when the standards are set and the assessments are are are, uh, are definite only then the fund flow will become more uh, uh, clear and the pathways to the fund flow of the uh, green climate fund will become clear next slide yeah this we have gone through next please next plan please so i would uh, uh, i would like to uh, uh, next slide uh, sudhi i think we this is uh, a repetition next slide please yeah. 
so uh, the, the finally the g20 while uh, talking about these four pillars uh, they reiterated their commitment uh, to the paris P protocol agreements uh, all the, uh, the the developed countries committed that uh, they unlike the uh, tokyo protocol where some of the countries went back in terms of carbon trading here they committed with that they will be a fund flow wherever there is a necessity after the standards are established so that commitment has come uh, during the delhi declaration next one please so uh, i just give a, a few of the things that um, we could achieve in the in the state of assam in this these areas of course in the state of assam i will give few of my examples and i would like some comments on that what we have done uh, with regard to biodiversity we tried to make biodiversity a part of the of all the schools in the state of assam uh, we have asked uh, we we get fund uh, from the government of india for, for setting up uh, uh, youth clubs etc uh, we have introduced a biodiversity register in all the schools there are about 50000 schools in the state of assam and uh, uh, we have introduced that every child should understand what is a biodiversity register and uh, of the in and around surrounding areas so we are popularizing that of course the chief minister of assam uh, is aware of the uh, of the issues of land degradation in fact uh, uh, this issue was discussed uh, during the uh, visit of uh, sadguru in fact who has been championing the cause of uh, and samir sharma sir was also there where we signed up an agreement with regard to land degradation in fact recently uh, the same as uh, sam has gone on a, on a guinness uh, record book uh, spree of planting maximum number of trees we of course did not match andhra and telangana but we did a number of innovative uh, uh, ways in which uh, uh, we could uh, uh, plant trees and we were very very careful in terms of the 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 nature of uh, plantation that we did because assam already is a biodiversity hotspot so we have done uh, we have done activities with regard to that we have also introduced in assam uh, uh, initial we making infant steps with regard to introduction of a green budget and uh, uh, we made uh, some sort of a commitment by, by from from all the departments with regard to what they are going to do with regard to the green budget and uh, the delhi declaration of course shows us uh, a direction in which uh, we should move of course marine pollution is not directly related to assam but other things with regard to circular economy with regard to land degradation and biodiversity are the three things definitely that assam is going to uh, look into very carefully Re regarding the university that we have some we are coming up with the skill university in the state of assam in which uh, green skills are going to be one of the uh, one of the uh, schools of excellence where we will be focusing on on the things that we have talked about and these skills of course we would also be giving both in schools as well as in uh, in all the universities here because the university the skilling in the uh, for the university students in short term courses in green skills is something that we in assam are, are planning to introduce this is what i had to say sir next just so that i don't miss out just let me see the last few slides so this is what i had to say with regard to my understanding of the g20 india summit how we try to encapsulate uh, the concerns of the nine planetary boundaries the parameters uh, where we were of concern and how they try to bring those nine parameters into actionable points in terms of what they would like to do on those four pillars and set the vision for the future i think that it's much much more concrete than what was there under the other protocols and the g20 has come up with uh, with with clarity as to what each nation should do and being the 20 most important nations i think this will be a step forward uh, in our uh, uh, work towards uh, environmental safety security and welfare of the planet thank you thank you sir thank you very much sir for presenting presenting the kind of celebrations that we are having we are glad we are glad that we are checking up we are checking up including the lot of declarations and lot of green budget and we are hoping things would go running on ground and uh, transformation would happen thank you very much sir and uh, i've seen you serving as a nodal officer for not one but many g20 meetings including the youth skilling and of course for the green jobs and environment thank you very much sir